go, right here. Ah, oh, damn it, I knew it. I knew it was gonna happen. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Was able to uh, get a couple days in out uh, on the water and thought I'd share a quick fishing report for you. This is gonna be for two suburban lakes here in the Bay Area. One of which is Quarry Lakes in Fremont. The other one is uh, DelVal Reservoir in Livermore. Um, overall, great days. Uh, we caught, you know, well, I should say I caught um, over 50 fish in just a matter of a couple hours at uh, Quarry Lakes and uh, about eight fish at DelVal. Uh, both of them had recently stocked. I don't know exactly when or what day they stocked. They no longer tell you uh, the dates of those stockings anymore. Um, but uh, I know that they had recently stocked. Supposedly uh, mountain lassen trout, mountain lassen trout, but based off of the or the catches, uh, I don't think so. I think they were just uh, DFW uh, trout. And so, if you watch the video, you'll see my technique, what I was doing, how I was doing it. Um, then you'll see the, uh, then I'll show you the, the, the particular lures I was using. All finesse gear, uh, no trolling on this one, all bait finesse. Um, and so, yeah, here we go. Take a quick look. All right, guys, so here I'm using a, a mini jig and uh, I casted it out, let it drop, and then just started jigging. This was the, the first one of the day. There we go. All the fish were about that size. Oh, there's a whole school right underneath me. All right, guys. All right, well, there you see it. It's got like tumors and stuff in it. Let's see. Let's see if they're ready for spoons yet. All right, so from here on out, <clears throat> I'm throwing spoons, and it's just gangbusters from here. Uh, I'm not gonna show every fish we caught. I mean, there was so many, uh, but <clears throat> you'll get definitely get a sense of the action. So we'll go through and show you some, some of the catches uh, kind of as the sun falls. You'll see people on shore coming up, uh, walking in and fishing. Those guys right there are just fishing and using bait right now. Um, and so we're, we're kind of casting in. Eventually you see a bunch of people oh, yeah. uh, casting okay. from shore as well. And while it looks crazy and looks like we're gonna hit each other, believe it or not, it was in complete harmony. Uh, everybody was just dialed in, All timed right. properly. Nobody was upset. Like um, and nobody snagged each other, it was great. So, enjoy. There we go. Oh. Yep. 
Now you're ready for spoons. Another little guy. I'm running all barbless. <laughs> There's another one. All right. Ooh, let's see if we can get two in a row. Dang it. Had the opportunity. There it is. I'm not going to touch you. There we go. Woo! Come on. Go. Yeah, spoon bite is fire. Getting better at the backhand cast.
And another one. Oh, come on, buddy. Come on. Woo. Go back home. Ah, oh, it came off. All right, so I think you guys get the idea. Uh, it was just cast after cast, uh, fish after fish, you know, um, and if you could just see, you could just tell we're all working the same hole over there. Uh, that's where the school was, and the fish were just not leaving. Um, so had a good day hitting that hole. More and more people from shore started. I don't know if they saw us and just started wanting getting wanted to get a piece of the action, but they came in and. Um, were successful as well. Uh, good people, we were all chit-chatting with each other, so uh, no, no hard feelings, no bad feelings. Um, more power to them, so yeah. All right, guys. So as you can see, the action was pretty gangbusters. It was pretty much just every other cast. Uh, in some cases, every cast you, you were, we were getting hooking up. Um, but let me show you what I was using. So at first, I was using a little mini jig. This is, uh, you can see here, it's kind of this neutral brown and green color. Got some action on that. Um, wasn't using the best rod for it. So again, I was using my, my Major Craft um, uh, area stage rod. It's a six foot four uh, medium fast or moderate fast action rod, ultra, ultra light rod. Um, really with mini jigs, I like to be at least seven foot, maybe seven and a half to eight feet uh, with a really sensitive tip that's just kind of just where you could just bounce the mini jig. Um, but we ended up catching some on the um, uh, on the major craft. Um, once I switched over to spoons, that's when things went crazy. And so here's here are the spoons that did it for the day. So this one right here is one I painted. This is a three and a half gram yellow with some orange reddish tones on it and I got some sparkles on it. Uh, it's on a unfinished gold back uh, spoon. And so this one right here was, I caught so many on this, uh, but then I ended up losing it. And so I had to paint another. Um, and this one right here also worked at Del Val again today. This right here, is the Shimano, little Shimano spoon, uh, orange front and back. I think this one is three, yeah, three and a half grams as well. That one was doing very, very well. And then at Quarry Lakes, this guy right here, so you can see this is kind of a diamond shape. After I lost the one that I painted, I switched over to this one. And uh, pretty much all the ones you see in this 
you know, the videos here and a bunch more that I didn't bother posting because they all look the same. Uh, we're all using this spoon. So this was working very, very well um, at, at Quarry. Okay, at Delval, uh, I started with this one. Uh, the water was definitely a lot more stained than Quarry Lakes. And so I, I started with this and um, I don't know, I don't think it had enough uh, of the, the flash to be able to call them in. So I immediately switched over to back to the, the Shimano one at Del Val and hooked up pretty quick. Um, but then, you know, you'll see in the video, there's a ton of wind. Um, and as a result, it was getting a little bit tough to throw the three and a half grams. So I threw a 4.2 gram uh, orange with the rose gold back. Um, and this is, I, I caught everything at Del Val on this spoon. If you'll see a common theme here, it's everything with orange tones is really popping right now. And I think it has to do with, um, partially I think it has to do with the, the water. The water is not perfectly clear. It's kind of stained. It's um, a little bit on the muddy side. And so, when you're using lures um, that are more neutral in color, they're not putting off as much flash, whereas the, the orange tones are really just put off a lot of flash in the water. You'll see it, like you can almost see it glowing if you're kind of going through the muddy water. Um, and so as a result, I think that's what was really calling all the orange tones um, that were really bringing them in. Um, the other thing that was kind of interesting is that uh, the all the fish hit were really close to shore, so nothing really deep. Um, they were all just really close to shore. That was the same at Quarry, uh, Quarry Lakes, but I think Quarry Lakes again is a little bit different situation because I think the fish tend to congregate in this little deep cove, um, uh, you know, right, kind of right by the, the docks over at, at Quarry Lakes. And in, in uh, at Del Val, um, I just think it has to do, my, my theory here is that uh, A, the air temperature on both days was definitely on the cool side. I'd say probably a high of like 60, maybe 61 degrees. The water temps when I was on my kayak was about 56 degrees. And so uh, great water temps for trout. Um, and at Del Val, uh, you'll also see later, I wasn't able to, to go out on my kayak. Uh, they didn't let, let my kayak in the water, so I, sh I fished from shore. Um, but at Del Val, I think, you know, Del Val has striped bass in them, so stripers in there. And I, and it, I suspect that the trout, especially these smaller ones, um, are hugging the shoreline because if they go out a little bit deeper, they're going to get just tore, tore up by the, the striped bass. That's my theory. I don't know. Um, it could be that I was casting, you know, at Del Val, I was casting out and they were chasing it, you know, my lure in and striking right as it got close to shore. Um, but seriously, it was probably maybe 10, 15 feet from shore. Uh, both days is where the fish were hanging out. Um, so if you're going out, definitely keep that in mind. You don't have to go very far. Um, they're, they're, they're fairly in close. And I, again, I think it has to do with the air temperature and the water temps. Um, so, all right, so let's go to, let's check out what happened to me on my kayak at Del Val. So what do you call this sort of crab? It's a kayak. H Hobie calls it a kayak, but it's like a hybrid between a stand-up paddleboard. So it's really like flat. There's no hull. Oh, okay. So you like don't disturb the water as much kind of? It just kind of, yeah, sits on top. That's neat. Yeah, like what I like about it is it's uh, ultra light, so it's like 45 pounds. Because uh, this, uh, does this go down inside or is that just straight through? Oh, it's just straight through. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a scupper. There's, there's, no, there's, there's no actual like inside. There's no inside. It's, it's solid all the way.
There shouldn't be any moisture. Unless it's from the morning dew. Well, that's just what I'm trying to figure out. coming out of the of the board see if I the more I touch here the more water's coming out it's like coming out of the gap there huh. so I don't know how you dry that it's a solid hull so I don't know how about it. right I, know. I don't know if it's just so there's there's somewhere that water's getting trapped in there. And I mean, there's obviously water coming out. So unfortunately I can't let you launch. Um, I'm not sure what the best way to, to dry this would be. Um. <clears throat> All right guys, well that was unfortunate. We uh, tried to launch from the kayak. But the uh, inspector found a very, very tiny amount of uh, moisture that, um, you know, we got it on uh, on video there. Thing very particular. Again, can't fault him. He's just doing his job, trying to protect the waters. So we got to figure out how and where we can do some shore fishing. Let's see. The challenge here is we got some breeze, not a whole lot of shoreline access. It's the middle of the day. I really know how to pick them. This lake is uh, somewhat famous for having very, very strict inspectors. All right, this looks sketchy, but let's see. Let me get down here. Thank goodness I got my trail runners on. All right, well, looks like we got some shoreline axes here. Water looks pretty good. Best part, no one else here. Or maybe that's the worst part, I don't know. But we got some axes. So today, because of this breeze, probably gonna have to throw heavier lures. It's a pretty good breeze too. I brought three rods out with me. Rod number one is my new uh, Major Craft Fine Tail. Area stage six foot four, running the uh, paired up with the 2022 Aldebaran BFS, and that's the uh, Vervis X4 line. I think six pound test, maybe eight. Uh, and then I brought the Queen Teton. Uh, I picked my longer rods here. This is a six six, uh, paired up with the Hybo Rise Air, and then I brought. My old spin finesse, which is the uh, Phoenix Elixir, paired up with the Shimano Stratic CI4 1000 series. This has got two pound, uh, 
two pound line on it, mono. So it might be, well, let's try. I'm just curious to see if I will be able to cast out a mini jig with this wind. So the reason why I brought the um, the spin finesse is, you know, fishing for trout with a mini jig is very, very effective. Um, it does require a longer rod, fairly sensitive, fast action. Um, and so this Phoenix Elixir is perfect for that. And I haven't really been able to find a uh, an equivalent with bait finesse seems like all the rods that are kind of in that seven foot range are really geared towards bass so for example my old 18 buoyancy great rod <clears throat> the reel can handle it but it just doesn't have kind of the same action as like this Phoenix for, for mini jigging. And you, the reason why you need that is because you gotta bounce that. You gotta bounce that little crappie jig. You got to be able to feel the strike. So that's where the sensitivity comes in. And obviously an ultralight action rod. So this is going to be tough today, I think, with this wind. We're picking up a lot of wind. All right. And here's my finesse kit I brought. So spoons jigs uh, marabou jigs i got some uh, uh, jig heads for pla other plastics um, but lots of spoons and on the other side got some uh, crankbaits these are all the ones from or jerk baits all the ones from japan i got um, so spoon action this is a three and a half gram spoon Was at Quarry Lakes a couple days ago and just absolutely hammered them with this this spoon as well as the uh, one of the ones I painted. All right, let's see. I want to go with something a little brighter, just because again the water is more stained. Decisions, decisions. Let's try orange. And when you're casting these uh, little micro spoons, the key is really the tempo of your reeling. You know, you, you can't reel too fast, otherwise it spins on you. You can't, oh, oh look at that fish on.
All right, guys. First one. Not too shabby. Go on, buddy. All right, so anyways, like I was saying, it's all about the tempo. Let's see if there's a bigger one there. You want to be nice and slow. Just a nice, even cadence. Looks like the color change worked because it's stained water. Something a little brighter, create more flash. So here's what I'm using right here. This is that Shimano Micro Spoon. I think it's like 3.2 grams, three, three and a half grams, something around that. But painted on both sides orange. Again, I went with the brighter color simply because the water is stained. Not a whole lot of visibility. Orange puts out a lot of flash. All right, so we caught one so far on this orange one, and I know it works, but I want to test some of these other ones we got from Japan here. Actually, you know what? First things first, I want to go with my lure. So I just painted this guy. I was using the same color pattern over at Quarry Lakes. And was just absolutely killing it until I lost it. So I painted up another one. Let's see, maybe a uh, Del Val trout, like equally the same. Now this one's gonna be a little bit more subtle than the uh, that Shimano spoon I was using. It's got a touch of reddish orange on it, uh, yellow, but the back is uh, unfinished gold. So here it is, guys. This is that orangish, reddish tone with the yellow on it and the sparkles. And then uh, the unfinished back. Let me see, I wanna try kind of like this. It kind of rounds out here. I don't wanna call it a cove, but it sort of is. Go well, that way, see if there's like a ledge or something that maybe kind of follows, parallels the shoreline. See if we can get some of that if they're sitting on the ledge. Oh, look at that. I don't know if you guys saw that. He took it right as I brought it in. Oh man, I hope that got on camera. I saw him come in and hit that. Okay, buddy. Little guy. All right, move down a little further. Making our way back. Came across another point, sort of. Let's 
Let's see how we do here. This particular point has a much steeper drop off. The other one was more gradual. So I'm thinking if uh, any fish are kind of sitting on the slope area, maybe. Kind of that transition period from shallow to dark or shallow to deep. There we go. Oh, another little guy. Yeah, it's action. Come on, stop flopping around. theory. Maybe because the weather temp, the air temperature is not hot and the water temperature is probably below 60. Kind of based off of the action I've had so far today. They're probably all in into being shallower water. So I'm fishing deep right now, in the deep parts. Maybe if the weather was warmer, maybe over here. But I'm gonna go with, they're more in the shallows. Looks like we have a bird that is stuck. Let me see. All right, buddy. Okay. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, my Lord. Let's see. I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna help you. Okay, okay. Let's see, oh, why didn't I bring a knife? Come on, Sean, let me think. Let me think. Okay, I'm gonna Okay, I don't know how I'm gonna help you, buddy. Don't worry, buddy. I'll catch you. I got you. I'm trying to figure out what I can do here. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. I'm trying. All right. Well, you can go ahead. You can go ahead. I don't. I don't have.
Sorry, buddy. I don't. Oh. I don't know if that counts as a good deed, but poor little guy has a hook stuck in him, attached to a weight. I didn't have a knife on me. I always have a knife on me. Upset that I didn't have a uh, a knife or something. It's all on my kayak. There we go. Not a little guy, but uh. there we go. All right, and he's off. I thought I felt the bump. See all little guys. Just like the other ones I caught, they're just kind of tagging it. There we go. guys and there you have it there's a limit they're all about the same size all little guys all right let's see one more There we go, number six. tell you the fishing has been you know overall I'll say it's been it's been very good the bite has been very very good however the fish are just all very very small you know I think in the last um, in the last uh, yeah these last couple days uh, I've probably caught almost 60 fish maybe more um, but nothing over 12 inches, I'd say. The fish here at, uh, Del Valle were exactly the same as at Quarry. I suspect that the supposed Lassen trout that they were going to, uh, or that they were supposed to plant was actually just uh, DFW, Department of Fish and Wildlife. I didn't see any uh, bigger fish coming up from anybody fishing shore, boat, kayak, uh, at either place. 
Um, and the ones at Quarry, you know, we saw them, we saw the truck pull up and fairly certain it was uh, Department of Fish and Wildlife. Well, if you want to get, you know, if you want to go out and get some action, uh, definitely hit Quarry or Del Val. They're not that deep. You know, I'd probably say that they were hitting maybe uh, 10, 15 feet off of shore. You know, obviously you're casting your lure further out and maybe they're chasing it in, but they're striking right about at that uh, 10, 15 feet off of shore. So, get on out if you want some small guys. If you're looking for bigger ones, we're gonna have to wait. But good times nonetheless. I am appreciative to be able to come out and do this. I'm appreciative of being able to catch so many, even if they were fairly or they were unspectacular. Um, still very appreciative to be able to do this. All right, Bay Area BFS signing out from uh, Lake Del Val. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. Um, maybe in a little bit, I'll kind of review my lure selection again for you guys. So, all right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.